warm welcome to the first Breeding to Win show of 2020. And on behalf of the Breeding to Win team, I'd like to take this opportunity and wish all our viewers a happy, peaceful and prosperous 2020. May it be everything you wish for and more. Time now to take a look at what we've got in store for you on tonight's show. Fee chats to Catherine Gray about the up and coming La Moron's Queen's Plate Festival of Racing. We find out more about the Cape Premier Yearling Sale with Kerry Jack. Fee chats to four leading Cape trainers about what to look for when buying at the Cape Premier Yearling Sale. Fee tells us more about what will be on offer from Evergreen. We look out for the CTS promo, which highlights web streaming details and the program of events. And last but not least, we found out who is the December Groom of the Month winner. The La Morons Queen's Plate Festival of Racing takes place at Kenilworth Racecourse on Friday the 10th and Saturday the 11th of January. Fiona chats to lead planner and coordinator of this prestigious event, Catherine Gray. It's a very busy morning here at Kenilworth Racecourse. Everyone's setting up in the background for next week's La Morons Queen's Plate. And with much excitement, I'm going to be chatting to Catherine Gray this morning, who is coordinating this wonderful event and has been very busy over the past few months putting it all together. Catherine, thank you very much for taking time to chat to us this morning. I know you're very, very busy, but it's all coming together very nicely. Yeah, really looking forward to it, as you can probably see over our shoulders. Everything's up. We now just have to put all the final touches in, the decoration and everything, and hopefully all the bad weather's blown over and it's looking like a really sunny and wind-free weekend next weekend. But we're on track, really looking forward to it and really excited for what's going to be a successful event. It's one of the highlights of our racing calendar. Everybody so looks forward to the Queen's Plate. We've got international visitors here. It's, it's absolutely marvellous. How are your numbers looking in bookings? Really exciting, again, because year on year our numbers are just increasing. It was interesting to see what happened to the numbers last year when we were this weekend earlier and again we saw growth so we wondered with being kind of one week later if we were going to see a drop but absolutely not. Friday we've got double the number of sales as what we had last year and that's really nice it shows that people are getting on board with what we're trying to achieve with the two-day racing festival. It's still small, but we are seeing exponential growth year on year. And Saturday, we've already got a few areas sold out and we still have over a week until we actually all come. So we're really happy with how the sales are going and just really looking forward to it. Well, it's wonderful to hear it's taking off because it's a great concept having a two day festival. And, you know, of course, Lomorans are very involved with the Goodwood Festival, which works very well in the UK. Yeah, so we've been involved with Goodwood for the past number of years, and it's been so interesting, certainly for me, to go racing in England and see these five day festivals where people are taking leave from work and they're going, you know, every single day over the season. And it was interesting to see how the public here reacted to it. There was, of course, support from the racing industry, but we're seeing now that the social aspect is also taking off and it's kind of becoming a part of people's holiday. So it's nice. Also, what we've tried to do is encourage people to come Friday and Saturday and not choose between the two. So that's why with the garden party on Friday, that ticket allows you access into the Style Lounge on Saturday as well. So really encouraging people to partake in the two days in their entirety. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea because it really is about being a two day festival. Now I can see marquees going up all over the place, but the setup is a little bit different this year, isn't it? I mean, I see you've got one of the marquees a little bit closer a little bit closer to the action yeah so our job actually starts basically the Sunday after the Queen's Plate the previous year because that's when it's fresh in your mind and you get all the the feedback and that feedback is so important to us so we have brought everything a little bit closer together this year so the stud club is really in a prime position right on the finish line actually and then we've moved the entertainment marquee the after party tent further down the track so that area will be very nice for people coming to the style lounge they'll have loads of shade and prime racing position 
Stag Club a little bit closer. Our picnic sites then come on the other side of the Winner's Circle. So everywhere you walk around, there's going to be nice activity. We also have the free area on the other side of the shoot, which we're really hoping is going to be well subscribed. It'll be interesting to see how that takes off, but we're set up there with bars, a food offering, there's shade, and it should be a comfortable experience for people as well. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, we're only just over a week away from the festival. Where can people still get tickets? What's available? Everything is online on CompuTicket, so if you search for the Lawmore and Queen's Plate just on Google and search CompuTicket, you can go in there. Everything is available on there. They are doing some sales for rooms in the building through the racetrack itself, but everything is available online. So as I said, some areas are sold out. Our picnic sites, that's completely sold out. We've only got about 300 tickets left in the stud club which is fantastic style lounge we keep pushing throughout because we like to have as many people on course as possible and the building i'd say where we still have some seats but i think probably the next four days are when people who are wanting to come need to jump um, because it's cape town everyone wakes up quite late so next week Wednesday, everyone goes, hang on, I need a ticket, and we don't want anyone to be disappointed. So go into CompuTicket, all the information for the various hospitality areas is on there, as well as on our website, which is lqp.co.za. We pay so much attention to every single hospitality area, whether it's a 350 Rand Style Lounge ticket, a 1,300 Rand Style Club ticket. We really want to give everyone value for money and a really good day out. I think we have achieved that. We always endeavor to do a bit more and give people a bit more. But if, if you want to know exactly what you get in those areas, just have a look on our site. Well, it's lovely because uh, everyone's got an option from whether what price they want to go in at, which is great. And of course, in terms of racing, we've got two fabulous races on the Friday. We've got the Cartier Scepter Stakes, we've got the Jamaica Handicap. And then on the Saturday, we've got the two grade ones being the Paddock Stakes and of course, the Longlands Queen's Plate. And we've also got a grade two and a grade three. So it's fantastic racing. And you've maintained some superb sponsors over the years. Yeah, we're really lucky because we've had a very loyal group of sponsors that have come on board with us and grown with us as the Queen's Plate has, has gone on over the years. So of course Cartier, they sponsor the Scepter Stakes and the Paddock Stakes on, on, Paddock Stakes on Saturday and they have a very big presence here um, they bring a lot of their guests, they also are big sponsors of our best dress competition. So they're very visible in various areas and I think they understand what the Queen's Plate is and what it's trying to achieve. Uh, we have the addition of Design and Darba sponsoring a race, the Pinnacle Stakes on Saturday. And that's also a really nice addition because it brings in a very African element, a design element. Um, and we're so happy that a group like that saw in the Queen's Plate an opportunity and something that they wanted to be associated with. And of course, for us to be associated with them is fantastic. Ardmore sponsored the Jamaica Handicap on Friday and they're also an amazing South African company. They do ceramics and textiles based in KwaZulu-Natal. We have Campari again, we have Heineken again. So it's really, really nice that every year it's just a, quite a familiar event for everyone. And it's a family that's growing and working together to make the Queen's Plate what it really has become. It's a super, super event. And you mentioned in that, of course, we've got the best dress competitions now. Everyone does their best to, to try and win the best dress. And I must say, it's one of the most elegant race meetings because everyone makes such an effort and the colours are just beautiful. I think the really fortunate thing and clever, uh, very clever thought um, that Gaynor had to make the theme blue and white in her Drakenstein racing colours is that you can see anything throughout the year that's blue or white or blue and white and it you think Queen's Plate. So you don't have to wait for an announcement of the theme and it's, you can kind of keep it front of mind throughout the year. It's also colours that everybody looks nice in and everyone achievably can find something in one of those two colours or both. And you know our best dress competition people have really come on board with it and you know we have an idea of, of what we, how we like people to dress. It's racing appropriate and very elegant effort, hats, fascinators. It's been fantastic to see how the men have really stepped up to the plate. Um, and looking, we were talking actually in the past few days, looking through all the photographs and the men have actually outperformed the women for the past number of years, which is so nice. I mean, why they should, well, why shouldn't they? Um, and of course our, our best dressed women's prize on Saturday is that trip out to Goodwood um, and that's such a special sort of once in a lifetime thing for anybody um, and I think that has also upped the kind of bar of, of, of outfit that people choose so 
hopefully this year people will pull out all the stops I'm sure they will um, and of course we do the competition over Friday and Saturday so both days it's nice to have people kind of entering and trying their best and making the effort. And of course it's not just about the two days racing for the fashion and, and the hospitality. We've got wonderful horses racing over the two days. It's going to be so exciting. Absolutely. It's so exciting. I always don't say anything about who you should bet on and who's the favourite because I have the worst luck in the world and I'm certainly not the person to ask. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it but I stay far away from from trying to put money down on anything because I always get it awfully wrong. <laughs> well, Catherine, thank you very much for chatting to us. Good luck with all the, the final preparation and we'll look forward to seeing you next weekend. Yes, looking forward to it, thanks. Great to have Catherine Gray on the show. She's got a very difficult job coordinating next week's Queen's Plate. She does a fabulous job. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there next week in their blue and white. And if you still require tickets, get yourself onto the website where you can see all the packages that are still available. The Cape Premier Yearling Sale takes place on Thursday, the 16th of January at the Cape Town Convention Centre. Fiona catches up with Kerry Jack, the Bloodstock Manager at CTS. It seems like yesterday I was chatting to Kerry Jack to get a CTS sales update and of course we've had Christmas, we've had New Year and the sale is literally around the corner on the 16th of Jan at the Convention Centre and Kerry is with me again just to give us another update uh, to see what we can expect on the 16th. Kerry, I just don't know where the time's gone since I spoke to you last, but it's really creeping closer and lots going on. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, here we are, another another year, and uh, the sale's obviously a week earlier, so everything's moved on a bit. Um, but we all systems go, and we're ready for the sale in a couple of weeks, really. Yeah, I know as a team, uh, the breeding to win, we're busy next week going out to as many farms as we can to see the horses. But before we know it, they'll be moving into the con convention centre on the Monday before the sale. And it's going to be all systems go. And there's a lot of events happening that week as well, if you could just run us through them. Yes, well, Anne and her team will be setting up on the Saturday while everyone's having fun at the Queen's Plate. Her and her team will be getting all the stables ready. The horses start coming in on the Sunday, which is the Clava Flay golf day for anyone who wants to get involved with that get hold of Grant and then of course Monday most of the buyers will be coming into Cape Town uh, we've got a, a sundowners at Manos on the Monday evening we'll send out info about that shortly and then of course on Tuesday the viewing starts and then Wednesday evening is the cocktail party at Nasdaq beautiful venue same venue as last year and then the sale starts on Thursday at one o'clock yeah, it's a really busy week, cram packed. And I remember the venue for last year, everybody raved about it. I saw all the pictures going around on social media. What a view from there. Fantastic. From one side, you see the harbour, and the other side, the iconic Table Mountain view. So really not a, not a, a better uh, place you could find. Absolutely. The locals yeah. loved it, let alone the international guests. <laughs> they absolutely adored it, thought it was a great spot. Yeah. But it's going to be, as you said, an action-packed time. We've got the Queen's Plate, then we've got the sale. The international visitors, I think, are already coming into town. And it's a really great vibe, isn't it? Yes, always. You know, we've got the same sort of usual bunch of internationals coming through, hopefully a few extras. We're busy still with um, accommodation and travel arrangements, so if anybody needs help with us, with that, give us a call. Uh, Kirsty's doing table bookings, so to get hold of her for that. And uh, anything else, just let us know, but, but we're ready to, to uh, show some good horses. Yeah, I must say, we've, we've spoke about the catalogue before. It's a really exciting catalogue. Lots of new young stallions coming out as well, which is going to be interesting to see how they sell. And I know when I spoke to the trainers about the sale, they're also getting quite excited about it. It's a great time of year and a great sale. Yes, it's always a good sale. And um, we've got 
a quality catalogue again. Every year it gets better and better. Uh, we've got 10% stakes winners to catalogue horses and 36 individual group one winners and two of the two of the first season sires were actually graduates of the sale William Longsword and Red Ray um, and then the other two first season sires are Rafif and Quasilla who of course is a brother to to the Quarari who's doing so well so they're all fairly well represented and very nice horses to see there and you'll be seeing a lot of the well you'll be previewing a lot of the bigger farms next week but there are a lot of small farms with two or three horses that are really nice. There's some gems to be found at those small farms, so don't don't forget to look at them. Yeah, they're obviously, obviously uh, quality individuals because you went around with the inspectors and, and had a look at all these horses. That's the beauty of the sale. You, you, you have really, really selected some beautiful horses for the catalogue. Yeah, it's great. We always get an international um, inspector, so it's myself, John Kramer, who's been doing it for years. And then we got Rick Wiley this year, who's had a wealth of experience. And between us, we try and put together the best catalogue we can find. And the vendors have showed us some really beautiful horses. I've been going around the last couple of weeks having another look at some of them and they've done really well so we're excited. Yeah I'm looking forward to seeing how the sale goes. Again we've obviously got the international visitors, the same ones coming as last year and hopefully a few more. Yes and hopefully a bit of um, optimism this year with the EU having announced that they will be doing an audit this year. Um, so hopefully we will get some new buyers on the way. Yeah, that's come at the right time. Well, best of luck, Kerry. I will look forward to seeing you there. And of Thank course, you. anyone can still get in touch with you if they need to know anything, if they need to book a table, if they need to get a buyer's card, anything they need to know, they must just contact you in the, or anyone in the office. Yes, please do. Thanks, V. Thanks very much, Kerry. Well, that could be our final update with Kerry before we see everyone at the sale. Next week, we will be showing lots of uh, the breeders and their wonderful horses that are going through to the sale. But we look forward to the sale on the 16th of Jan. It's going to be a great sale. It's a great catalogue and it's always a wonderful event. So get yourself to the convention centre on the 16th. There are many factors that come into play when purchasing a thoroughbred racehorse. The likes of a pedigree and confirmation are just two elements. Fiona chats to four leading Cape Town trainers to find out what catches their eye when purchasing of the Cape Premier Yearling Sale. The Cape Premier Yearling Sale is just around the corner. It's to be held once again at the Convention Centre in Cape Town and it's on the 16th of January. It's a very, very busy time for the trainers. We've got obviously the Queen's Plate meeting. We've got uh, the Met that follows the sale. So it's a very, very busy time and it's lovely to catch up with four of our top trainers in Cape Town to just see what they'll be looking for at the Cape Premier Yearling Sale. And we start off with Candice Bass Robinson. Candice, it's a fantastic sale, isn't it? Really well done. Uh, CTS put on a great show. Yeah, uh, Fee, they really do put on a good show. and. Uh it's quite nice to look at horses indoors for a change, especially um, with the weather elements that we have down here with the gale for southeasters and things like that. It's, it's quite nice to be protected from that. And uh, yeah, I think obviously, you know, it's a strong sale and uh, we have a lot of nice horses to look at on there and uh, it's very enjoyable, yes. As I said, it's a really difficult time of year for you as a trainer. You're busy getting your horses ready for the, for the big meetings and you've also got to find time to get to the convention centre and start looking at these horses. Yes, everything's kind of crammed into the next two weeks coming up, so it does make it a little bit difficult. You know, one likes to also, what well, we certainly like to get out to a couple of the farms as well and try and see the yearlings on the farm before we have to see them at the convention centre. Um, and then obviously we've got the Queen's Plate weekend, Friday and Saturday racing, so it doesn't leave a lot of time to fit all of that in. And then uh, obviously we've got a little bit of break and then it's viewing again and, and the sale on the Thursday so it is a bit cramped and uh, life is very busy at the moment and then in between all of that there's Christmas and New Year and all those sorts of things as well so it makes it difficult but uh, I think by the time the Met's finished you kind of feel like you want to crumple in a heap but uh, it's it's all good it's it's um, you know a lot of our, our clients are down here English clients and, and clients that come from abroad for the summer here so it's nice to see all the new faces and catch up with everybody and uh, it's uh, good times ahead. Yeah it certainly is a crazy time of year but there's always a good vibe with all the international visitors but now you've had some success off this sale. What is it that you actually look for in a yearling? I often sort of see horses in, in the parade ring and I think trainers go for a sort of a certain stamp of horse. What will you be looking for? Yes, I think people do tend to, to be drawn to certain, a certain type of horse. Um, it's always hard to say exactly what you're looking for, but but um, I think from our perspective, the two types of horses, obviously you're looking for, for something with a bit of speed that you can use as uh, um, that you can use for sprinting. And, uh, you know, obviously we've been drawn towards a lot of the water winters um, and we've had a lot of success with them, um, especially over the last two years now. So I've, I'm kind of um, a little bit biased towards them at the moment as far as the sprinting stallion goes. And I think 
you know, we've got a fair eye as to what we look for in, in those types of horses. I don't think, I think there are certain types of ones that can run and others that, you know, just end up being, you know, one or two time winners. But so they're always exciting to look forward to. And they're one or two new sprinting stallions on the, coming onto the scene. A good couple of new stallions now that are, that have, um, It'll be out at the sale, so it'll be nice to see, you know, what their progeny look like. And then obviously we're all looking for the classicals. We all want to win the Mets and Julys and, and those sorts of things. So, you know, there we're looking for something that might take a little bit more time and, uh, you know, looks like they'll get 2,000 metres. And obviously I, I like to look at a horse that needs to have the qualities that we like. I like a horse to have a good middle and nice rein and a horse that walks well. Um, those are probably the three most important things. But as you know, they come in all shapes and sizes and not everything works for everyone. So it's it's always difficult. And, uh, you know, this time of year is quite early for a lot of horses. It's an early sale. And um, I think a lot of horses have been, not really, some of them have been pushed a little bit to get to where they are. And, you know, you kind of have to just be a little bit wary of that. Um, but all in all, it's, it's a good sale. And there's some nice pedigrees on the sale looking at the catalogue. Um, I've had, got a good few... Um, horses that I've marked pre-sale viewing um, so we've got a lot to look at and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll live up to what their pedigree suggest. Paul Marshall is another of our top trainers in Cape Town and he certainly knows how to pick a horse and with the yearling sales just around the corner I'm sure he's already had his BDI out. Vaughan have you been visiting a few farms looking at the yearlings for the Cape Premier? Yes we have Fee we've had done a bit of homework but not too much there's still lots more to come. It's a fantastic catalogue, though. What do you look for in the perfect yearling? Well, yeah, I think, you know, the horse has got to be an athlete and, and he's got to look like an athlete. So it's very important that he walks well. And um, your first impression is always the, the, the right impression. You know, I, I don't believe in, in looking at a horse long enough to, to, to force yourself to like him. You either like him or you don't. And, and, and I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes is that they try and make the horse look nice and, and, and appeal to them. And it doesn't work. Super catalogue, though. We've got some, some young new stallions out. That'll be interesting to see how they sell. Yeah, very much so. It's going to be nice and interesting to see how they go. Um, but there's a couple of old tried and tested ones, and I, I think we'll stick that way. But it's a lovely sale. Great to have the international buyers here as well. And, and been a successful one for you? Very much so, yes. You know, we've had one world come off there and a couple of others. So, yeah, it's been a very good sale to us. Another top trainer who will be busy at the Cape Premier Yearling Sale is Brett Crawford, and he's taken the time to chat to me about what he'll be looking for at this year's sale. Brett, it's going to be an exciting sale. It looks a good catalogue with some nice youngsters, uh, stallions coming out of it. Yeah, very much, Sophie. It um, definitely a strong catalogue. Um, you know, I think it's 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 the type of sale. Um, the way the markets are at the moment will be very interesting to see. Um, obviously, it's quite tough, um, and it's it's not easy to get orders as trainers at the moment. So, it'll be very interesting to see how the market goes, um, and obviously, we'll we'll be looking at everything um, to get an idea of what uh, what we would like to put on our shortlist. Yeah, lots of work to be done. I think the horses will be arriving Sunday evening for sort of viewing to start from Monday onwards. Uh, it's going to be a hectic week. Yeah, it always is. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a great venue. Um, it's very user-friendly to look at horses. So that that's a big plus. Um, hats off to CTS for keeping it there. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to, to seeing what we can pick out. And what sort of individual do you look for uh, in a yearling? And, and what sort of pedigree, what sort of stallions do you like? Um, you know, if you, I think if it is an exact science, um, you know, we all would have picked many champions. So it's it, it's never easy, but obviously, um, you know, I like to, to look for a very athletic horse. Um, they've got to be athletic in my eye, um, move well. Um, and obviously, I, I, I'm also keen on temperament, uh, watch them, make sure they've got good temperaments. Um, pedigree is obviously vital. Um, obviously, there's a few new, new stallions on the block, so it'll be interesting to see some of their progeny. Um, but all in all, at the end of the day, um, you know, I think it's just that gut feel when you see a horse for the first time, nine times out of ten, you, you, you get that feeling that I want to look at the horse again and, um, you know, you, you really dissect them after that. Yeah, and they're sort of quite pushed to be ready for this sale so early in the year. So then they've obviously got a lot of time after you've seen them at the sale as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's not easy. You know, I think um, the vendors do a great job in getting them ready so early in the year. Um, but obviously, as a trainer, you, you've got to try and look through all of that and see what your end product will end up as. Um, so like you say, a lot of work to be done. But, um, you know, we've done well off the sale in the past. Um, and I see no reason why we can't be again. Justin Snaith is our leading Cape trainer. And he couldn't do it without picking a good horse. And over the years, he certainly picked some very good individuals indeed. Just in the Cape Premier Yelling Sales, just around the corner. Catalogue looks pretty good. Yes, look, um, 
It's very hard to say what you look for in a yearling. Um, there's, there's no rules and uh, we just apply it in the way that uh, we feel works for us. I, I've got, um, uh, we have a very strong team which includes my clients in selecting horses. So um, it's, it's a very hard one and uh, the best way everyone thinks they know what to look for and uh, I'm sure there are guidelines that people can follow uh, and certain things that individuals look for in a racehorse. For me, it's plain and simple, is having someone that can finance your decision. <laughs> it's a very simple thing. So as much as you, there's a horse that you like and, and uh, if you don't have the support of a patron or your bloodstock agent, you cannot ever have that horse. So it's not a matter of just looking at a horse. There's so much more that goes into the whole process and um, finding that horse of someone's dreams so uh, and our dreams yeah absolutely you've certainly got to delve into the pedigree but uh, as a team as a family you've got that extra support you've got your father who's got plenty of knowledge Jonathan looking with you you know plenty of eyes to, to pick out a good one yes um, a lot of my clients also enjoy so some some trainers some people don't have to be at the sales I have a lot of owners that love the actual being there and buying the horse the whole idea of going and looking at it and with us deciding on on the horse they like and going and buying it uh, I, I, I know uh, like uh, I've got a, a couple guys that like especially like like Nick Nick loves to walk around the sales and find a, a horse that he loves and uh, it's the same for all of my uh, uh, clients that are, are, are pretty much involved with us it's 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 exciting and part of the excitement is going to that sales and finding that champion so uh, I think that is very important yes yeah, CTS they certainly put on a good show and there's a very good vibe and as you said it's almost like the competition that you want to get that horse we are very fortunate to be in Cape Town. I can't say it enough. Um, the time of the year, what it offers. I mean, like today is New Year's Day. The different parties and different setups that are happening in Cape Town. And I still think value for money. Look for us South Africans that live here, uh, certain areas. I've seen some of the bills that people have been getting at lunches and stuff. It's not cheap uh, for some of the locals, but uh, for international people, with the rand, the dollar, the pound, it still is uh, uh, an amazing value for money for foreigners. And as I said, you just couldn't get a more beautiful city. It's going to be very competitive with all the international bias here, but uh, we've got a, a festival ahead with the Queen's Plate, and then shortly after the sales, we've got the Mets. But a very, very busy time for a trainer. Very busy. Um, you've got to... Um at the end of the day, my, my job is to make the horses run as fast as possible and our business relies on that. So I have to always keep an eye on that and that for me, that has always been my my priority. I've, I'm that type of trainer. Um, Jonathan uh, handles a lot of the other side of things to take the pressure off me. So does my father, so does our whole team. So uh, uh, that's why we could probably operate at the level that we do. Uh, it's because uh, the team, uh, I especially come around the sales time, We've got a lot of runners, so even like you'll see all our runners have dropped over the last month. I'm busy preparing horses for Lamarons Queen's Plate weekend. It's a double header. I think it's very important for Cape Racing that those fields are kept at, at uh, the right numbers. So I've, partic uh, I've meticulously kept horses for this weekend that's coming up and uh, it has become our premier uh, weekend in, in Cape Racing. So everything has moved and uh, I'm hoping we're ready for the day. Well, best of luck with the racing and best of luck at the sale. I hope you get something nice. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. Good to have Justin on the show once again. He is our Cape champion trainer, and we hope that he has a fantastic season at the Queen's Plate and the Met and at the sales, of course. Evergreen Farm have three entries on this year's Cape Premier Yearling Sale and all represented by the sire Coup de Gras. Evergreen Farm are sending three fine-looking yearlings to the Cape Premier Yearling Sale on the 16th, all by Coup de Gras, who is, of course, by the almighty Tappet. Lot 36 is out of a dynasty mare, Morning Light. She is a very smart filly, a beautiful individual. She's strong and moves well. Lot 194 is out of Empress of Oz, who raced in top company. She is a very athletic filly. She walks really well and is a half-sister to Laser Star. Lots of early potential with this one. Lot 231 is a colt out of a VAR mare. It's complicated. He is a good athletic type with a beautiful top line and walks well. 
Wishing Evergreen a successful sale next week on the 16th at the Convention Centre. Be sure to take a look at their exciting draft. to announce our Groom of the Month winner for December. Let's find out more about Ricardo Hose from Ascot Stud. Ricardo Gauss is our Groom of the Month for December 2019. He is from Ascot Stud and there is a rather special story behind him. He was nominated for his dedication and bravery. And in the words of Dr. Ashley Parker, on the 15th of October 2019, we saw that our tractor barn and upstairs house had flames coming out of the windows. Ricardo was the first on the scene after being phoned for help. He rushed into the barn to discover that the tractor had caught fire Without a second thought, he bravely jumped on the burning tractor and reversed it out of the barn. He then unhitched the trailer and jumped back onto the tractor to drive it further away from the barn to prevent the fire from spreading. The tractor did not get far as the front wheels had caught a light and so had the diesel tank together with all the wires and pipes. He then rushed around the barn to get the only hose pipe to try and put out the flames that had already started in the underneath of the barn. Together with the help of other onlookers, the fire was put out inside the barn while the tractor was still burning. Once the fire engine arrived, it took them approximately 20 minutes to put the fire out on the burning tractor. Without Ricardo's bravery and fast thinking, the damage to the house and barn would have been devastating. My mother said, company from Chief Fox, it's Ricardo. Ik wil net sê, baie, baie dankie vir die kleren wat ek gewen het. En ek is van Escort Stad. Ricardo certainly deserves to be rewarded our G-Fox December hamper. Congratulations and well done, Ricardo.
a wrap for this week's edition of Breeding to Win. We'll be back with more Breeding to Win action where we'll feature the Cape Premier yearling sale and what to look forward to. From myself, Julie Alexander, Fiona Ramsden, Grant Knowles and the rest of the Breeding to Win team, good night.